So Muhammad clearly saw himself as a prophet. Yes. You know, uh, been reading some of the Quran thanks to a gift from you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Jesus clearly saw himself as the Son of God, and he said so, and he said that he was a fulfillment of prophecy, uh, and that he he is the Savior, and the and and that he was destined to die to pay the price for us, so that we could have freedom, that we can live under a grace covering that we cannot escape. How do you reconcile the fact that? you as a Muslim believe Jesus was just a prophet when Jesus himself said that he was the Son of God, that he was the fulfillment of the, the really what the culmination of all scripture is about post-creation, the entire Bible points to a savior, Old Testament and New Testament. So how do you, how do you respond to the fact that Jesus said he was the savior? And even, even Muhammad didn't, didn't disagree with that. So how, does it, how, do the, how do the Muslims not accept Jesus as Savior. Yeah. Well, the, the, there's a verse, a special verse about Mary and Jesus on the Quran. Totally talks about that. And Prophet Muhammad, actually he does not believe Jesus is the Son of God. Because there's so many verses in the Quran, God tried to, to forbid such an idea like that, say no, he's the Son. But the point is that we believe in Jesus in Islam. A lot of religions don't believe in Jesus, not whether he's a prophet or a Son of God. But the point is, Muslims, we love and believe in Jesus. That's the most important. Whether he is the son of God or not, I think that we leave it to him when he comes. Jesus as the son of God, Jesus as the savior, Jesus on the cross, resurrected, died, buried, uh, you know, and then resurrected and ascending to heaven. That is the center point of Christianity. Yeah. If you do not believe that through Jesus' work on the cross, through his death, burial, and resurrection, uh, that he created this circumstance for us to have what I call this grace covering that we cannot escape. So regardless of our actions, good or bad, it's totally up to God what our eternal destiny is, is to be. And that is the very pinnacle center point of Christianity. If you do not believe in that, you're not a Christian. Jesus is the Savior, according to Christianity. It's important to highlight that because I'll say sadly that many christians don't understand the centrality of of that very story that that the the culmination of that is what's called the gospel story god created us god created us with a mission and a purpose and a vision and we rebelled we decided to worship all that he created instead of him and so that created this gap or separation or brokenness uh, you could say it's unrighteousness. So we're, we're out of right standing with God. And the only solution for that was something that God could do. And that was, that's the reason why it's so important to see Jesus as, a, as the, the Savior that has come, uh, the Savior that has died and paid the price that is the, the spotless lamb, so to speak, uh, to, to give us that grace covering uh, so that we don't have to feel like we have to we have to earn it ourselves, and this is uh, this is I think this I mean, it's the center point of Christianity. And uh, the reason that I wanted to bring it up here is I'm I'm wondering where the hope in Islam is, because I know for me I just see my own failures regularly, but I see them in light of the fact that the gospel tells me it's okay. So it doesn't mean that I can go about my life purposely worshiping my idols, sinning, hurting people, you know, fighting against God, those kinds of things. But it does say that when I do, it's, it's all right. Jesus has got it covered. I'm, I'm okay. I'm forgiven even in the midst of doing it. And, and that if I turn to him, then I, then I receive the peace that comes with it. I don't necessarily have to turn to him to receive the forgiveness, but I, I turn to him to, to feel better, to feel that joy within my own life. So in Islam, how do you, how do you get into right standing with God? And how do you deal with when you see your own idols that come out? All, all the prophets came to destroy that belief of worshiping anybody else but God and you know the Quran always talks and remind us of listen you know if you do this thing you know your punishment in the, in the day of judgment will be hellfire 
whether you, if you worship God, if you come to God, then you know your, your reward will be heaven, your reward that God will love you and get you closer to Him. And then, uh, so Islam always try to bring people to God. But the, the thing in God and Islam always, and, and God mentioned that so many times in the Quran where it say, look, I do not have partners. And he fight that really well in the Quran. He fight it. And he stands against anyone that put partners with him. And he shows the, re the reward of punishment of those ones who bring uh, uh, partners to him. We have a special verses. Special verse in the Quran is called uh, uh, Tawheed, which is that uh, God talks about himself, the absolute one. I'm the only one, he says. I make no partners. I have no partners. So that, that you know, you say everybody else is a creation of God. He says, everybody else I create, I made. And even he brings an example where people were debating uh, Prophet Muhammad back then, talking about, well, like, how could, you know, the, the, the thing is that makes Jesus the son of God because he did not have father. And God speaks back to them in the Quran and says, look, Adam did not have a father or a mother. So he, he should be chosen as a son of God. Why you choose Jesus, but you don't choose Adam? But these are miracles that God gave to Prophet Jesus, mm -hmm. we believe, you know. But I think also, like, the, the thing is, you see, I mean, I do believe the, you know, the center of Christianity is that, you know, you have to believe Jesus is the Son of God or the God, you know. <coughs> and that has been mentioned in the Quran as well, what Christianity, God in the Quran says, no, this is not the right path of Christianity. And he tried to argue it in the Quran, what was the right path and it's been changed. Mm -hmm. So in the Quran, it's been, there's so many, like I said, the, the Christianity or Jesus and Mary has been mentioned in the Quran more than Prophet Muhammad. Because that was the debate back then with the Prophet. Let me, let me try and pin you on this a little more. Yeah. And, and, and this is maybe a personal, maybe if it's too personal, don't answer it. But I, before I was a Christian, before I realized the gospel, I think, I think as a Christian, you really need to be able to articulate the gospel in less than a minute. You ought to be able to just say what it is. It's very simple, you know. That story of God created us. He created us for a purpose, and, and we decided to, to worship all that He created instead of Him, and, and that created this gap or separation or brokenness between us and God, and God provided a Savior, which was Jesus. Jesus died for us, and that ushered in this, this uh, period of grace where, where basically whatever we do is, is accepted. It's not it's not condoned necessarily, but it's, it's, it's okay. We, we have this grace covering that we can escape. I can't imagine not, I can't imagine life without that. Once I have it and I feel it, it doesn't cause me to want to be rebellious. It doesn't cause me to want to have false idols and to worship. It causes me to want to be humble and to be thankful and to be joyful and to learn more about God and to want to serve that God who loves me with such passion that he says, I'll actually love you regardless of what you do, whether you do anything or not. So in your own life, how do you get to that kind of joy? You see, the message that you have, we have that message in Islam too, in the Quran. But, you know, also in the Quran talks about how- But, do, but don't you have to earn it? Yeah, of course you have to earn it. You know, you have to earn it, but you have to earn it by believing in all the, all, all, all the religion of God. But you have to earn it by working hard and by providing, by loving one another, like you said, you know, sharing and, and loving your neighbors, of course, you can't just... But, but by very nature of that, by saying that you have to earn it, means that you're sort of partnered with God. You're saying that in order, f in order for you to get the gifts of God or to get eternal life or to get the joy that God wants us to have as individuals, that you have to participate. You know, that, that, you, have to, that you have to do something. And I th I'm saying that that Christian, Christianity at its core is absolutely arguing with that. It's saying that, no, you don't have to do anything. Jesus has done it all. And, and there, to me, there's joy that comes from that. And so, how, what's the path to joy for, for a Muslim? So can you be a sinner and also believe it in Jesus? Would Jesus want you to be a sinner and, and, and also in the same time believing on Him? Jesus came to forbid the sinner. He tried to block you from making sense. He wants you to be connected to God. So how could I be believing in Jesus or I'm a Christian and not making sense every single day? How could that connect me? Where are the joys about that? Should okay, I well, just, this is, but, but I see that. But let's say you're driving down the road, coming home from work, and you get angry 
at another driver and uh, you just have a bad thought or maybe you say something that isn't nice or whatever. It's like, oh, obviously you got angry for a reason that wasn't appropriate. You know, some people would say, oh, that's a sin. And, and it makes you feel kind of slimy. Like, how do you reconcile, you know, or maybe it's something worse. Maybe you steal something or, or you hurt someone or, you, you know, you do something, you know, some, how do you reconcile? How do you get back to where you feel okay about yourself again? Well, same thing in the Quran. God says, I'm here for you. Even when you make a sin, you can always come back to me and I will still forgive you. So, you see, I think we have the same message, but you directed it more into Jesus and, 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 and I direct it more into God. But you also believe God, Jesus is the Son of God. So we have the same message, but I think you relate it to, it, to Jesus, Prophet, Jesus be someone. But I relate it to God directly. But it's the same belief you have, the same okay. joys, okay, the same thing. So is that teaching in the Quran? Yes, sir, okay. definitely. That teaching is in the Quran that every time, so there is no nothing this, in the Quran that says you can't just make a sin and say this is it. God says no come back, I always think good about God. Mm -hmm. And when you think good about God, then God can change your life. You know, people could make sin all their life, and they got two minutes before they die, and they ask for forgiveness, God say what? Guess what, I'm here for you, and I will forgive you if you're honest. Yeah, I actually, I read something in the Quran recently that contradicted that. Yeah. It definitely. said that, it said that uh, those people are infidels or something, and that they're they think that it's okay to come, you know, but that they don't actually believe. And maybe that was a general statement, general. but uh, many of the comments that I've been reading in the Quran were very, it was very interesting because it seems almost like Muhammad had a bit of contempt for people who are non-believers. Like, yeah, they can do whatever they want. We can do whatever they want. Nothing we're going to do is going to affect them. God's already got their path defined. So just, just, you know, go on. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, see that, see the back then, the Medina, which is the prophet's, uh, you know, town, there were a mixture of Christians and Jews and, and non-believers. So it was a big town, just like, you know, a very diverse town. But back then, people, God's, you know, uh, Prophet Muhammad or the Quran says, look, you could have your way, I could have my way. You know, I don't have to come to change you. And that shows the loving and peace. So Prophet Muhammad, like people show, oh, he's trying to force Islam. How could he force Islam when his neighbor is a Jew? Mm -hmm. How could he force Islam when his neighbor is a Christian? That shows that he was not forcing people like, okay, he was carrying the Quran in one hand and carrying the sword in another hand. You believe or will kill him. That's not true. A Jew person used to be bad to the Prophet, like and it was neighbor. And then he got sick. The Prophet asked, he's like, what happened to that guy? They're like, oh, he's sick. He's like, then we go and visit him. And when he saw the prophet, he started crying. He says, you know what? I was so bad to you because, you know, your beliefs. and all you, But now seeing you in my house, that changes my life. You know, and, and the prophet says, look, you don't have to be a Muslim. You could, you know, we believe in, in Islam, actually, in Quran. We believe Christians are Muslims. Mm -hmm. We believe Jews, I mean, the Judaism and Jews are Muslims as well. God speaks of that in the Quran and says, look, because Because you see Allah as God and we believe in God. So exactly, in Allah. exactly, okay. exactly. I was laughing when you said that because I was thinking maybe one of the things that we need to do to, part, to solve some of this is that you need to come to my house and I need to come to your house. Yeah. 